Void Linux, a Linux distribution that is very unique compared to other Linux distributions. One, they don't use, they are not a fork of something. In other words, they're not in which is a fork of Ubuntu, which is a fork of Debian. Is they're completely their own thing. They try to have a rolling release while keeping it stable, which is rather nice since it's really annoying when software isn't up to date and you want it to be up to date. They use Runit as their init system rather than systemd, which depending on who you are, you either don't care, care a lot, or confused. Another thing is they support Musil and the glibc GNU C library. And they also support, they have their own package manager called XBPS. So to download, you head to their page, select download. And they used to have more versions, but now they just have XFC. I wonder if it's because it was hard to maintain all those different versions and they're just like, here's XFC if you want to install all their things. Go ahead. You can go and install a base if you just want to make a server out of it or whatnot you can go and do that but i grabbed the glibc version because i don't want to deal with any potential problems while installing pay attention to these here and download it you probably want to also pay attention to the documentation but well, let's now go and install void linux which i've got the machine ready to go Uh, I want to boot into that. That was uh, rather fast, but XR. Er. 20, 80, I need dash s flag and of course it's not installed because why would you want to change your resolution 20 by 1080 apply this configuration and now we have a screen now to install void linux we must do sudo uh, sudo void installer, which is a nice, uh, I believe it's n curses menu, which doesn't like me resizing it. Okay, so keyboard. Let's find our keyboard. Probably just be QWERTY or. Ah, uh, there, US. That was a little small, so make see if this make helps it at all. Network. Uh, oh, that's my device. Yes. I like to use DHCP. And I crashed the installer. Oh, okay. Source, source installation. Let's do this just because it'll be faster. Host name. Uh, back to system host name. Avoid VM is probably good enough. Cal. I need the US UTF 8. 11. Or EN US. Oh, there it is. English United States of America. Um, select area. We are in America. And 
uh, come on. You can move. There we go. Come on. I almost kind of just want to set it to Chicago since it's right there. So we're in LA. There you are. Come on. I don't think it's moving, so it's like nope, that's not it. It doesn't like it now that I made it big. Let's uh, let's just restart it. All right, let's, let's start it over from a full screen window. Oh, well, actually, there we go. Introduction, network. Oh, still lagging. Or that one. Yes. It'll take a little bit. That works working. Source. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Go and do local. We can update later. There. Oh, no, I don't want Zimbabwe. Dang, it's gonna choose Zimbabwe, isn't it? Nope. Come on. We can move. Angeles, now it's moving perfectly fine. Password, complicated password. You can delete. I believe in you. Maybe if I, uh, so this, it will update it faster or just make it harder on me. Probably just make it harder on me. Uh, why is it now freaking out? Like membership. We'll teach you. I think. All of these are good. Maybe the users group. Oh, that is. Okay, I hope that it's correct. And partition. Kind of partition the drive. The, honestly, the hardest part of installing Linux is. And really any operating system is partitioning. Let's do GPT. No, thinking about it. It should be MBR, not GPT. Uh. Partition disks. CF disk. So I want to select DOS. And then. Let's see. All right, new. I think I want primary. Let's make it primary. And then let's do new. That. I don't think I also want to be primary. No, I want to set this to be bootable. And then right. And then it should do its magic. And then now we can quit.
Okay, if everything went right, we should now be able to install. So let's install and hope it works. There we go, it is installed correctly. That took far too long. There we go, now it's rebooting. If everything went right, it should it should boot into Void Linux. That took far too long. Void Linux team, can you please improve your uh installer? Linux Right. We installed it. Alright, so let's see. I doubt it's installed. That's what I thought. Let's uh, hold on. I'll see if we get the thing running. Okay, we're back, and I learned don't install VirtualBox drivers because this will happen. So don't do that. Okay, so. First one I'm doing installing is do a sudo xpps install to so that should do a upgrade then and xpps needs to be updated itself so xpps that's what I'm doing oh now let's Upgrade everything. I'll oh, pause the video after it's done updating. Okay, it's finished installing or upgrading rather. And something you can do is see all the packages that need to be restarted. You do x back restart. Um, is it not in x tools? Oh, that's wrong. Right. And the one problem with Void is XP, or at least with XPPS, is the fact that the package manager, you can only download one thing at a time, which means that if you have a, if you don't update frequently, it'll take forever the install. So make sure to update frequently. Okay, there, it finished. So I do x check restart, and basically the output all the packages that need to be restarted, which is easy. Just do a sudo reboot, and that should restart all of the all of the uh, packages. So that's nice. Alrighty, now that everything's up to date, now since. You're using Void, you probably want to know the basics of using the run init system. So, to do it, everything should be run as root. You do sv up to start a service, down to stop a service. Uh, come on, restart service. And then like with the that output of x check restart, you can technically write a script rest that restarts all those things, but we're not going to do that today. And then 
status to get the status of the service. So a good example would be DHCPCD, which is the DHCP daemon. If it'll load. Comma. There we go. Let's get our password. It'll tell you it's running and it's on that. And you can get a the status of all services by doing this. Which is probably gonna take a little while. So you can see all the services are currently running, which is not that much. Do a assume HTOP is not installed. That's what I thought. Top. Come on. You can do it. See you can see that it is only using uh two uh twenty two hundred and ninety megabytes. Neat. Oh. Why? Uh, oh, let's test. So, you know, SV down. Let's do Dbus. I don't think that's a good idea, but let's do it. I see something. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought it was a bad idea. Uh. Um. Let's um. Um, you know, C up D bus there. So this should now work. So that's an example of of enabling and disabling a service. Is as a reminder, don't mess with D bus. I think that should be enough since this video is going to take far too, far too long to record. Hope you learned something new. Please void, figure out why it lags horribly on VirtualBox. And uh, like, comment, subscribe. Maybe put in a comment explaining me what I did wrong. And maybe I'll put it in the uncut version of this video. Uh, have a nice day.